Hey guys, I recently played Halo in Call of Duty for the first time, and while they certainly were interesting games, what I found more interesting was the attitudes, behavior, and demeanors of the gamers themselves that I was playing with. So after a little bit of googling, I landed upon an article talking about essentially self-determination theory. And what does that mean? theory that deals with your own internal self-motivations, behaviors that you are self-motivated by, and the degree in which there's this self-motivation. So I thought, hmm, that's interesting, because for me, not growing up as a gamer, I'm not really heavily motivated to play games. I think there's sort of a high barrier of entry to success. And the article actually talked about that. It's a graph. On your y-axis, you have uh, essentially the difficulty of the game. And on your x-axis, you have the skill set of the player. So if a game shoots up in difficulty really quickly, while your ability to play that game or your overall level of skill in playing games in general is low, you're going to fall into what's known as the anxiety region. It's going to be frustrating, you're going to be tired, you're going to be grumpy while playing that, and you may not come and try to play that game again. Then there's the exact opposite effect, where the game is super difficult and your skill is very advanced. And so that's a, po a positive thing. You are able to fully enjoy it. And in between there is this unique uh, environment where if you have low level of difficulty of game and moderate level of skill, you're sort of in in the zone and that's a place where you can lose yourself in. The game isn't too easy that you can beat everything, but it's not too hard that you're getting frustrated that you're not advancing within the game. And in the broader sense, um, there are some other things that the article talked about that motivates gamers. The ability to connect with other people and socialize, but not only that, but to compete with one another, with another person. And then there's the whole idea of simply wanting to win, period. Or, yeah, wanting to win, being obsessed with winning. Uh, that really isn't going to be a super strong motivator for a returning game, but that might get you to play the game once or twice. And then there's something similar where you are motivated to simply advance within the game or to complete a set goal or mission. And that's going to keep you sort of in this trance-like state until you actually accomplish it. And so that's sort of where uh, lies in sort of an addictive type behavior within that kind of ideology that you must advance, you must complete this mission or else. And I don't know if you're actually enjoying it at that point, but you are definitely engaging with the game and playing with it. And then there's this other category which I sort of fall into. If I'm going to play a game, it's going to be because I'm going to uh, be obsessed or enjoy the game dynamics themselves. Are we in another world? Uh, do we have these futuristic weapons? Can I fly? And then there's this other category which falls into the general immersive experience. Uh, if you are, for instance, in another world, um, <laughs> that might be stinking cool. You might actually like that and that might be a reason to come back to the game. Most of the games that I played recently, I really wouldn't find them that immersive. GameCube, for instance, played that on an HDTV. The graphics were terrible. I was having a hard time distinguishing between the walls and the floors. There was all these flashing colors. I really wouldn't quite call that immersive. It was definitely interesting game dynamics for sure. That's also one of the reasons why I'm interested in VR. And when I say interested, I'm not talking about, you know, $40, $50, $70 game interested. I'm talking about an entry level system where I'm paying, say, 10 bucks a game. And so that's why I recently picked up an Oculus Go. VR is supposed to advertise truly immersive feeling. Of course, with the Oculus Go, you only have basically three axes or three degrees of freedom. You're not allowed to get closer to something unless the game dynamics themselves propel you forward. You're not able to walk forward, you're not able to jump up in the air or crouch. So fully immersive, not quite. Immersive enough for someone that really isn't into games, 
uh, exactly. Uh, that's perfect for me. Uh, even the uh, app that allows you to watch Netflix on uh, a simulated movie screen, uh, actual projector, movie projector, and theater size screen. I thought that was fascinating. I had my own uh, apartment in the VR world. <laughs> it was nicer than my apartment in real life. So of course that's going to bring me back to that experience. There's another one called Face Your Fears and let's just say I knew what was going to happen. Played it several times, equally frightened. But yeah, so there's a lot of different motivations behind why gamers uh, continue to play the same game. Of course, at some point they are going to get bored of it and then that's going to see a drop off in that self-motivation. But really, um, it's also it's all about uh, a novel new experience it's a bit of a challenge um, that's not too frustrating that you want to quit but also something that's immersive and that you can use your talents and skills in if it's something like a, a puzzle game then that requires a lot of problem solving but then there are those type of people they're in it for that challenge not necessarily um, in it to beat the level but in it to be challenged themselves so can't tell you what motivates all gamers I can tell you when you see a frustrated gamer it's a pretty obvious reason why generally they are losing whereas when I play a game if I'm losing well it's because I have a really terrible skill level that, that's probably not I'm not going to be super frustrated because um, you can't give up if you haven't really practiced and played something a lot uh, I also like it um, where you have sort of like a free to play where you don't have to complete something in a set amount of time. Hate that. Um, I also like it when you can race against yourself or compete against yourself because then you're not worried about the ridiculous skill set of someone else or the AI or computer. Instead, you're simply trying to better yourself. And for me, that's more. That's more focusing in my field of adult learning theory than anything. They, uh, when people come to my class, they're really so competing against themselves. They are trying to gain and better themselves, uh, irrespective of the other people. We don't grade everyone uh, on a scale. The, the worst students fail and the best students succeed. Um, you know the subjectively best students. What we do is if you can understand the content, you have to demonstrate mastery. And of course with games it's a little bit similar. You do have to demonstrate mastery uh, in the sense of completing a mission or a goal. But really you're just trying to uh, compete to win in that aspect. It's more so appealing to that idea that you need to succeed or win. So game theory, interesting. Uh, motivations behind while people game, equally interested. So what are your experiences? Do you consider yourself a hardcore gamer? <laughs> Am I even allowed to talk about games because I don't all uh, own a proper console like an Xbox or a PlayStation? Or are you even surprised I know what those are? So that's really all I have for you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.